Hey there, and good morning. So, uh, you're probably going to see a bunch of people kind of going around behind me here because I already heard alarms going off in my house. And that means that everybody's going to be getting up. But as you come on, remember to go ahead and say hello over on the side if you can, or pop a little harder. Thank you. And just let me know that you're, let me know that you're there. Hey, I, I know I really had no clue as to what I was going to discuss until I sat down and all the lyrics going through my head. I had all this different stuff. I was looking through my list of quotes that kind of give me some motivation, you know, creative thought. You go in the day. And I was like, you know, yesterday I was talking about the ego and and having, you know, really recognizing the ego for where it's at and what, when it's done. And then, good morning, Jason, Patrick, Addison, hey. Um, so today I was like, you know, our, an, another aspect of something else to really look at in the world of the ego and when we're wanting to attract the life that we want, the desires that we have, is to really look at where we're settling and how that relates to our desires you know are our thoughts worthy of us there's a there's a question for you the question of the day are your thoughts worthy of you and what do i mean by that are, are your thoughts worthy of you how can a thought be worthy of you well are your thoughts worthy of you are you thinking things that are worthy of your desires are you thinking things that are worthy of the intent that you have for your life are you thinking things that that are worthy of the direction, the path that you believe you are on, that you want to be on, or of the person that you want to become, or you know the, the things that you want to have in life? Look at that because if your thoughts, and here's the thing, the majority of us, self included in this, I mean, I do these copies and a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, I'm preaching to myself here, but. <clears throat> A lot of the times our thoughts and our feelings, because when I say thoughts, it's not just thoughts, it is feelings as well. We can think something all day long and if we're feeling the opposite of what our thoughts are, then we're gonna manifest, we're going to create, pull into our life. What we're feeling and how it relates to our thoughts. So that's where, you know, like somebody is always dating the same person, right? No matter what, they've dated 20 different people, but they've always dated the same person. Why do I always get for well, on the main complaint? But why do I always get men that can't come that can't commit? Now that right there, right? That is because you might be thinking one thing, but you're feeling that right there. You're more attached to what you don't have and the scarcity of it. So what you're pulling into your life is exactly what you don't want. And that would mean that those thoughts and feelings <clears throat> are not worthy to what you want. Okay. And then the next thing is, is that, you know, I, I titled this, are you selling for being a victim? And it's not so much that we're running around in a victim state consciously, but a lot of the times we are running around in a victim state. And I actually have this little, it's a really long story, but I'm going to read to you. In the beginning of this story, just because I think it makes a really great point. Once upon a time, there lived a sea lion who lost, who had lost the sea. He lived in a country known as the Barren Lands, high on a plateau, far from any coast. It was a place so dry and dusty that it could only be called a desert. A kind of coarse grass grew in patches here and there, and a few trees were scattered across the horizon, but mostly it was dust and sometimes wind, which together make one very thirsty. Of course, it must seem strange to you that such a beautiful creature should wind up in a desert at all. He was, mind you, a sea lion, but things like this do happen. How the sea lion came to the barren lands, no one could remember. It all seemed so very long ago. So long, in fact, it appeared as though he had always been there. Not that he belonged in such an arid place. How could that be? He was, after all, a sea lion. But as you know, once you have lived so long in a certain spot, no matter how odd, you can come to think of it as home. 
that's exactly that, you know, the, the sea lion could be saying that, you know, oh, I got lost, I was captured, I was this, I was that, it, it, all these outside reasons as to why he's living in the desert. All these how he got there, and it's this tragedy of a story, and he's missing out on life, and this is happening, and that's happening. And now there's that, that story right there. It goes on and on and on, talking about the sea line. I'm going to focus in on number, and how he got there, and why he's staying there in this moment. And how he could be feeling about it. So it's really paying attention to those thoughts that keep us in the space of the desert. And, you know, it's um, one of those, it, it, if you look at it, I, I can't think of the technical term here. And if somebody wants to pop off the technical term, if you know, feel free. But, you know, it's, it's when like, we, we have somebody that has been kidnapped and they're kidnapped for five years and then they get rescued, right? They're saved, they're back with their family and all they can do is desire to go back to the, the kidnapper because they were so comfortable, they felt safe there, they learned to be safe there. We see this in prisons where our prison population, you know, a guy goes into prison and then he, 20 years later, gets let out of prison and he turns around and he instantaneously finds himself back in prison within 90 days. Because why? He could not survive outside of the prison mindset, outside of the prison home, because he was no longer comfortable in his freedom. He wasn't comfortable in this, in this over here. He needed that container, that area over there that, that held him, that he knew was, was going to keep him safe look at those areas in your life where you are potentially being that prisoner because we all do it this is human nature we tend to we tend to get very very comfortable in some really bad situations and we don't even notice that they're bad situations we do call them much like in my, my story there about the sea line we get used to calling these bad situations home and what that comes back to is that we are consistently supporting our, our home, even though it's negative, we might go, oh, this is really bad, I want out of it, but we're consistently supporting, and, you know, our head and our heart, we're supporting, yeah, we're supporting with thoughts of, I can't miss that, I shouldn't do that, I, you know, it's this person's fault, it's situational fault, it's economy, it's government, it's my church, it's my, it's my, the trauma from my past. It's, you know, I, I have children, I have this, I have that, I have health issues. Blah, blah, blah. We have all these different excuses as to why we need to stay stuck in the desert, why we're staying stuck in the desert. And then we turn around and, and the desert's not making us happy with the fear of what is different. The fear of our desires, of what we want to create, is stronger than our desire to get unstuck outside of the desert. And you really have to start to look at those. Staying in the desert, you're staying in that comfort zone of victimhood, of comfort, of just doing what you always do. And again, awareness comes in here because you have to apply awareness to the situation because otherwise you don't even realize that you're doing it. You don't even realize that you're sitting in the middle of the desert. You, you, you just fall into the mindset of it's okay to just keep doing what I've always done. But if you just keep doing what you've always done and thinking what you've always thought and feeling what you've always felt, then get off of my conscious coffee. Don't read any positive. Don't listen to any motivational speakers. Don't do any more self-improvement. Stop desiring your dreams, your goals. 
Stop wanting a better body. Stop wanting more health. Stop wanting more love, better sex, more money, a better career, world travel, bigger house, a bigger car, a better car, whatever. You know, stop wanting all that stuff because if you are wanting it, and, you know, it is wanting you, but it's wanting you to also wake up and to start to desire it. And that means that you have to, first of all, see how you're sticking yourself in the desert because none of that stuff is going to happen in the desert. None of it. So you really need to start to gain awareness and take responsibility for where you are. Own, own that you were in the desert. And that even if you were brought here by life circumstances, that you still have a choice at any given moment to turn around and go back to the sea or to stay in the desert or to mosey your butt off you know, and find a beautiful meadow or find a mountain or what have you. It is always your choice. And it is also your path and your choices that got you to the desert. So the quicker you can own your part in anything that happens in life, even if it is one of the worst possible things out there, the better off you'll be. Because as long as you're finger pointing, Not living an empowered life, you have to empower yourself by owning it. You know, Jim Rohn. I love Jim Rohn. I used to go to bed by Jim Rohn every single day. I would listen to Jim Rohn for at least an hour in my twenties, and he used to. And I, he used to say, you know, put it on the fridge. Put it on the fridge. I'm broke. I'm unhealthy. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm you know, and this, I'm that. If if you're if you're sick, write it down. If you're not looking, if your body's not the way you want it, then write that down. If your bank account doesn't say what you want it to say, then write that down. If your relationship's not what you want it to be, write it down. And his point is not to focus on the negative. His point is awareness to what where you're at, and the awareness of where you're at will give you the power to move past it because until you are aware of exactly where you're at and what you have, you really truly can't move forward. So get into that space. And I'm not saying pull a gym run here and write it down and post it on the fridge and look at it every day and tell yourself this stuff because that's not necessarily what you should need to be doing. Awareness that these are the things, these are your your points of victimhood and whether you think that you're that you're being a victim or not because the majority of victims will say I'm not being a victim but you are I even have my victim stuff you know every one of us has this victim stuff that we have to apply that attention to where we're being a victim so that we can empower those places so really start to look at where you are being that victim take note of it is what that means Okay, so that you can, and this is the yesterday and a couple of days ago, I'm just talking about shining the light, shining the light, shining the light, and you have to shine the light on your victim status so that you know where you're being the victim. So do that, focus on that a little bit today. And then once you have that, then start saying, okay, how are these victim thoughts, feelings, are they, are they worthy to my the path I want to be on? Are they worthy to me? Are they worthy to what I want, my, my heart's desire, my soul's desire? And you're going to come up with an obvious no. So no, they're not worthy of, of that. So now you have to get into letting go of those thoughts. And you let go of those thoughts by doing positive reinforcement. So we're going to start building up the... You know, because we have, remember I was talking about the highways in our head, right? And our thought patterns and everything. When we do something for a time frame, then we build this this highway, you could say, in from an action that happens in life, a feeling that we have, the two the thought that we're going to think. And when we do that, we, we click into autopilot in our thinking. And in our feeling, and we have to. That's why we have to become aware of we're being a victim, and we have to become aware of the thoughts that are not worthy of us, and how they're not worthy of us, and that we have to actually 
go on the front side and consciously really, really work at shifting those thoughts, shifting those thoughts, shifting those feelings. Sometimes you work with the feeling to shift the thought. Sometimes you work with the thought to shift the feeling. And it really is that you have to learn about yourself. It comes back to, you know, if, if you find that you're not feeling good, then that means that you're thinking all the wrong thoughts. That means that you fell back into one of those old highways and that you're and that you're not letting yourself move forward. You're not creating a new pathway. And you need to be able to, you need to constantly be creating those new positive pathways because those positive pathways are going to get you to your desired goals. And when you're working with the mind, it's just, it's just the Looking at, first of all, shining that light on where you're being that victim and where you're settling for just having what you're having. Where are you on autopilot? Where are you consistently just coming back into that self-imprisonment status and being comfortable in your prison and not embracing your desires? Because every single time you say no in a, in a seemingly innocent way, to your desires. I'll, I'll give you a little ring. And you know, body language says a lot. I will answer that in just a second. I'm going to finish up my train of thought here and then I'll go to the forgiveness, okay? Um, a, a lot of the times our body language has a tremendous effect on, uh, it, it speaks what we're saying. So notice when you are asking something or you know, sometimes we will look for approval. Sometimes we will be looking for connection. We might be looking for all these different things. And our body language will, I don't know if I can get my butt like if I could like this, okay? And we do this a lot. I, I see if, you, if you're out in the grocery store or you're walking around, you can, you can see people all the time. They're always, like their shoulders are turned in and they're looking down and their eyes are cast down. And they, just, they have this look on their face and their body language is all about just not being empowered. And their face says that they're not empowered, everything. Or they might go from this empowered state or appearing empowered, and then they ask a question and they turn inward like this. And I was like, oh, you know, this, that. This right here says, my thoughts just took me to a space of this old thinking my thoughts just brought me down, made me small, and is mo I'm, are moving me into a negative charged space. So maybe you had a feeling rise up of, of fear, or maybe you had a feeling rise up of uncertainty, of needing connection, of whatever that is. Notice the thought, and, it's, and once you notice, like, oh my gosh, I just went like this, I'm just looking down, I, I closed my shoulders in, I crossed my arms, I did something like that myself up anymore instead of leaning into that pattern and we all have different patterns okay so some people may all of a sudden start talking like this or you know clenching their, their jaw and it's really looking at those different things what are your patterns become aware of a couple of them and then make the shift to the opposite of that and you're going to notice like if the person who does this a common one <laughs> person that does that, that if you, instead of falling into the groove and, and asking for what you think you want in that moment, which is keeping you small, just simply go like this. Simply go like this. Pull your shoulders back. Hold your head up high. Open up your, your chest, your chakra area here, you know, your heart center, and focus into a space of, I'm not small. I, I have so much to give. I have this. Change those thoughts instead of leaning into, oh, um, I, need, I need somebody else to, you know, you're, all, you're, you're big, I'm going to lift you up. No, lift yourself up. Lift yourself up. And how does that come to self-forgiveness? 
and uh, how does self-forgiveness come into play when you notice the negative thoughts? You have to forgive yourself. And here's the thing, you gotta forgive yourself for being for being human. You have to forgive yourself for being human. And so many of us, hey Chris, so many of us do not forgive ourselves for being human. We beat ourselves up for very human things. We beat ourselves up for making mistakes. We beat ourselves up for for not you know, acting right. We beat ourselves up for not thinking right. You're probably, I mean, listening to this might be beating themselves up because they might go, oh, she was just talking about me. Like, like I always do that. I, I shouldn't do that. The shoulds get a hold of you. And what you have to do is you have to, self-forgiveness is a process, much like the mourning process, much like forgiving somebody else. It it's just a process and you have to take the timeline off on any of this stuff. You have to take the timeline off, but especially in the land of forgiveness or mourning. You really have to take the timeline off because this is not, you know, maternity. You don't have six weeks to get it done. What you have is you have however long you have. Every single person is going to be different. It's going to take consistently, you know, a lot of different things for us to really get in there and be able to let go of different things. So whatever your work is, whatever your trauma in the past is, whatever, however those strong, those freeways are, is what we're talking about, because it's the freeways. Some of our freeways are, you know, in cement. Some are dirt roads. Some are super highways, and they have all the buildup. So they can handle a lot of shaking and earthquakes and a lot of movement that try to get them to go a different direction. So what is that that information highway, that thought highway, feeling highway in your head? How strong is it? I can tell you what, it's a program that you've been running since you were five. It's pretty damn strong. It's a program that got built over the course of a relationship, like a 20-year relationship. And then it's pretty damn high. It's something that you're constantly supporting every single day and it's pretty strong. The land of forgiveness is that you've got to really focus in on, hi Diana, you have to, Diane, you, you really have to focus in on that forgiveness though and letting it go and giving yourself the ability to be human and just realizing that because you are human, you are a victim. You are a victim of victims, okay? We are all born victims of victims. We are all mentally fucked up, as I say, all the time. There's not one of us that's, you know, what you would consider completely mentally stable, sane, got all of our shit together, all that different kind of stuff. If we were, we wouldn't be here, okay? We're here because we're learning, we're here because we're growing, we're here because we need to change. When we, when we notice the negative, negative thoughts in the victim mode, we're going to notice that a lot of it does come back to self-love. Are you guys still there? Give me a couple thumbs up or something. My internet just went out and came back in. I don't know, maybe the wind's blowing outside from. Everybody still there? Okay. So, you know, I'm going to just continue on and pray that it's all good to go. So, okay. Um, so, in order to love yourself, you have to forgive yourself. In order to forgive yourself, thank you. And in order to forgive yourself, you have to love yourself. So it goes to forgiveness is a state of love. Love is a state of forgiveness. That so yes, absolutely. You need to love yourself. And, and really, I would say lean more into the love aspect than the forgiveness because the forgiveness will come when you're focusing on love. It has to. You cannot 
you cannot love without forgiving. Okay, so really focus in on, on really truly learning to love yourself and putting those, and the state of love that you're looking at here is to become aware of where you're not loving yourself, where those thoughts are not worthy, where you are being a victim and love yourself enough to take the risk to do something different, to change what, what you are, you know, what you're so comfortable doing that that living in the desert that you have now just home and realize that if you really want to go back to the sea that you can and it might be scary because you've been in the desert all this time but if the sea is calling to you then you need to go to the sea whatever your sea is you know the sea is calling to you because the sea wants you the sea misses you the sea has all of your desires for you but you've got to be willing to risk, really risk the journey back to the sea. You've got to be willing to risk getting to the sea and realizing that maybe you've forgotten how to swim as well as you used to. Maybe you're not as comfortable there, but you will get comfortable there over the course of time, just like you got comfortable in the desert. Okay, Just like you got comfortable in the desert. And you have to really, the majority of people, we will not do the things that make them uncomfortable for a long enough period of time to make it comfortable. Don't remember who the teacher is, but it's a beautiful statement, and, and it really is, I think it sums everything up. And when we're moving, you know, when we're looking at settling and victim and all the stuff that we're talking about, how do we get to this space? It is that we have to make what is what is unfamiliar familiar and what is currently familiar unfamiliar so you know it's from a from a state of being a mother i being not a mother it's a very unfamiliar territory i've been a mother for 22 years so since i have been a mother for 22 years that makes up the majority of my life and the majority of my life being a mom, to go back to a time frame in my life and say that I would be comfortable not being a mother, or I, I, would, I would not be comfortable not being a mother. Everybody in my life, in one way or another, I just do. Being a, a nurturer, a mother, is part of who I am, and it is so strongly ingrained in me at this time that I would have to do really a lot of work to shift that. And that is one that I don't want to shift. So it's not something that I'm going to apply focus on. I love mother. But if I was suddenly cast out of being a mother and didn't mother anybody anymore, all of a sudden I would feel just lost and it would be scary, you know? It would be absolutely horrifying. But then there are those things because it would be so unfamiliar. And I'm so comfortable in what I'm familiar with with being a mother. But then when I, when you look at something like that, it's like, what about the things that are negative in our life, right? So let's look at like alcoholism. So if you are an alcoholic and you're just comfortable always going to alcoholism, uh, to the bottle for the masking, for the comfort, for the this, for the that, right? The bottle is your security blanket. It's it's your security blanket. It's what you're, what you're dragging around with you to protect you. And granted, maybe you're not an alcoholic people listen to this. But what do you use in place of that? That's your security blanket. Where are you masking? Because that's that victim. The victim uses the masks. The, the victim is the one that's going to program is to to find that comfort and when we're growing and when we're trying to achieve the goals and the desires that we want we move into a land that's not comfortable and it feels risky it feels scary it feels like oh my gosh i might die out here i might be alone i may not have any friends what will my family think all of, and that's typically where we go it's like we we start to worry about what our friends are going to think what our family's going to think the people that we're going to lose in our life you know, the changes and all of this stuff builds up this anxiety and this fear 
all right, you know, what's going to be the perception of this? What's going to be the perception of that? And then that then gets supported with, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I, I don't make enough money. I don't do this. I don't do this. We start support. I'm not healthy enough. I don't have enough energy. I don't have enough willpower. I don't, I get where I'm going. I don't have enough patience. I, I don't really, you know, I don't have that enough understanding. All this different stuff. So we support and then we support again and support again. And the thing about thoughts is, in our feelings is that they're always attracting more like thoughts, more like feelings. So thoughts attract the feelings, right? Because the thoughts are helping it. the thoughts and feelings create more experience, that pull in what we already are feeling, what we are, what we're thinking about. So if we're thinking a negative thought and then we support it with another negative thought, because that's what happens in like this case right here, like in for an alcoholic, you know, it's like, oh, well, I know, I just, I need a drink just to take the edge off. I need a drink just to, just, you know, calm my nerves. It's been a really rough day. You don't understand. My boss was really, really, you know, yelling at me. I almost lost my job. This happened. Then you have a drink and it's like, okay, I feel better. But now my kids are bugging me, and this is this happens, that happens. So we start to find other reasons to drag our blanket around with us and and really, you know, just support it, support it, support it. And that becomes a comfort ground. And we all use these masks here and there every now and then, but it's when you consistently are using a mask or you're consistently masking in multiple ways. And then letting it go and being able to risk and having the strength and it it's really just requires just a drop of faith and a drop of strength to really push through, you know, just commit to like what I think it was the very first conscious coffee I did. I asked everybody to make a commitment to something that pushed their boundaries just a little bit. That that was do that just for the 30 days I'm getting these conscious coffees. Because getting up at six, you know, five forty five for me was a push for me. So I was pushing other people to do that as well. Just pick something that is a little bit out of that comfort zone that it just pushes you enough. Because in that, you're now focusing on one thing and you're trying to, to support that one thing. But you have to put down the bottle, you have to put on your blankie, and you have to push through it, and it's going to get uncomfortable. And when it gets uncomfortable, you're going to reach these different areas where all of a sudden you're going to say, you know what, this is bullshit. I don't need to do this. That was really stupid. This was, you know, so-and-so's right. I'm not really getting anything out of it. You know, I... I why am I doing this anyway? I haven't seen any changes. I am that negative highway coming back in and wanting you to jump on it and take off. Okay. And if you allow yourself to jump on it and take off, then remember that that is a couple of videos back. I did. I talked about doubt doors. That's that doubt. Those doubt doors are opening up and going, hey, come here, come here, come here. All of a sudden, drawing back into your life exactly what you always have, exactly what you have right now, exactly what is not wanting, exactly what you are not wanting, and then you're looking once again, and you start pointing your things outward, and you'll say, yeah, well, you know, that works for her because of this, and that works for him because of that, but I don't have the family support that they have, and, and I don't have the resources that they have, and I don't have the energy, and you know, if, if you worked a 14-hour day the way I do, and if you, if you had the health issues that I have, and if you had, you know, had to come home and your, your partner was doing this, or, you know, if you had the handicap that I have, I have ADD, I have ADHD, I have this, I have that. These are all excuses. Do we have these things? Yes. But you become what you own. And if you own your victim status, then you are going to remain a victim. So, and actually, I think that 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 feels like a great close right there. So, I'm going to actually close right on that. So, really go back to that and and look at where you're being the victim and stop 
building that way. First of all, shine the light on it. Find what I was talking about, Jim Rohn talked about, write it down, and then stop owning it. Only write it down so that you can see it, so that you can be familiar with it, because you have to shine the light of awareness on it so that you can see when it comes up. And then stop owning it. And own the person, the thoughts, the feelings that you want to pull into your life. Own them for today. This moment forward, start to bring in and attract those by putting your consciousness on what you want as though you already had it in that expectancy energy of oh my gosh it's christmas morning and i am opening up my present and i am so excited because it's here it's here so put your expectation your thoughts your feelings right here in this moment because tomorrow's not going to happen all you've got is today start feeling the love today start feeling the joy today start feeling your goals today start feeling the abundance of whatever you're looking for today claim it own it today and it will always be there in the future in lots of different ways. The universe, God, will provide lots of different experiences, people, places, events that will support that feeling if you make the commitment today to see where you were being a victim. You will put it down and now apply your focus to what you want, to your desires, okay? And with that, I have gone quite some time over my, my schedule time, so I will catch you tomorrow at 6 a.m. You can also follow me at www.kendallooms.com if you didn't already know that. And um, I also have a bunch of videos here on Facebook and on YouTube and all that good stuff. But I will catch you tomorrow on Conscious Coffee at 6 a.m. And